I made rather a point of going around and telling it because I began telling it because I was very distressed to learn that the popular legend of the first Penzig War is the carrier of the bow declared war on himself and lost. That is not true. I was there and nothing of the sort occurred. And I'm going to tell you about it. For those of you who don't happen to know, I am Count Jean de Lamarche. I had the sort of dubious honor of being Count of the East at the First Pensic War, which we will get to in due course. But the <laughs> events leading to the First Pensic War commenced when Mary Adolf of the Bow, having already reigned twice in the middle, being a Duke of the Middle, um, departed to the East Kingdom for modern reasons, but was duly appointed as the ambassador of the Middle King, who was at that time the Uriel of Monarch of infamous memory. I'm going to get to that as well. Uh, and uh, the Planet appointed Carrier Dark of the Bow as the ambassador of the Midrand to the East. However, he returned to the Midrand at Midrand Telstein in Tregerson and recited a quite elaborate poem in his best style. Uh, uh, which he said, among other things, that the fierce barons of the uh, marchers, meaning me, and others were calling for war with the East and the like, and ended, uh, King, my word is war! And we all slammed our tankards on the feast table and cried, War! 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 And Uriel of Brannock took the war arrow and handed it to carry a dock of the bow to bear to the East King, who was at that time the infamous Shogun Rakurai of Kamakura, whose misdeeds are set forth in your program book, so I won't go into that. Um, so, the next bit is the only bit I did not see personally, and it is my understanding that carry a dock of the bow did duly return to the East and presented the war arrow to Rakurai of Kamakura, the shogun of the east, and Rakurai of Kamakura took the war arrow and broke it, and declared, it shall be war. So, Karyadok did not declare war on himself. He did, however, facilitate the declaration of war between Uriel of Branach and Rakurai of Kamakura. Um, by a curious chance, uh, the East Kingdom being, as I say, our program book explains, in a period of regrettable anarchy, Cariadoc very gallantly won the crown of the East at the next crown tournament and set about setting the East Kingdom to rise. And um, shortly thereafter, I came to the East and uh, having been at that time a the moral of the mid-realm, I may say a reasonably good fighter by mid-realm standards. I've lost the semi-final of the last mid-realm crown I fought in to Mad Fate and Classic later to, to Darshi. But at all events, I came to the East and carried off wanting someone he knew and could rely on to carry on his good work in the restoration of the East. Um, he sought me to enter the East Kingdom Crown Tournament. I may say in those days we had no such things as residency requirements and the like. I had dwelt in the East all of about a month at the time. Uh, but uh, I went into the East Kingdom Crown, which was a very small crown. Uh, the East, as we say, had been going through a very sad stage in its history, and at that time the, the Eastern Crown Tournament was in fact a eight-man single elimination tournament. Uh, so I see Sir Garanir of Ness, who is now my junior, the, the second senior knight of Ethelmark, and um, uh, Sir Ishmael of the House of Akbar, and Shlomo Ben Shlomo, who never got knighted, I think, because he left the society soon thereafter. He had been one of Ron Rice's squires, but he was a very good fighter. And, um, 
and I defeated him in the final, very, very narrow fight. I fought always Mace in those days. I charged in on him with the Mace, and uh, he fought short side. He slammed me in the knee, and it was the knee, and I slammed him in the side with my Mace. And he was clearly dead if he hadn't taken out my leg. So, L of the two knives, who I'm sorry to see is now on the wall of the lost, the Seneschal of the East, took me into the gentleman's retiring chamber and examined my leg and found that indeed the purple was right there on my knee and told me, yes, my lord, you are the crown prince of the East and I advise you to put some ice on that. <laughs> Very calm. Uh, I was the, the crown prince of the East, but we now found ourselves uh, facing war with the middle. Uh, Wu's ruler after Ariel of Prague, uh, the man who had won the next crown there, was, curiously enough, the gentleman who had made a really good fighter of me, Andrew of Selden West. I had recruited into the society, but very shortly thereafter started teaching me to fight. I was a relatively small and shy young man in those days. Andrew We'll talk about more tomorrow. For those of you who have his picture is also a last in the wall of the lost. But he took a pike maul, which isn't legal nowadays, and gave me a short sword. And if I could get to him before he knocked me across the list, I was moving fast enough. That, that made me a fairly fast fighter. So, uh, thereafter, I became more formidable. And as I say, I won the crown, but there was. Andrew as the uh, king of the middle, and Berenger Hunradi, who I also regret to say is on the wall of the last, was their crown prince. And uh, so after various negotiations, we arranged to meet uh, in battle, not at the present Penzik site, I may say, but the site which is just slightly the other side of the border over in, in Ohio. Um, I might say at the, the council meeting, well, we were settling this. It was actually early September. It was not in, uh, the usual uh, July or August. I'm saying the reason for that. They, they asked me at the time, they turned to me, Johan, they said, you're the one who lives close to that area. What's it going to be like in September? I said, one word. I said, rain. Uh, but I was right. Uh, but fortunately, the rain didn't fall until after the battle. Um, so we assembled at uh, the duly appointed place, and um, the precise numbers I could not tell you, but there were there were less than a hundred, I think, warriors of the mid realm and about half as many warriors of the east, together with their faithful ally the Dark Horde. A young nauseating the Khan of the Dark Horde, who I regret to say is also on the wall of the lost and carry a dark of the bow, I'm very glad to say is among the living and was telling tales to me in the market today. Um, we're blood brothers. Uh, so the Dark Horde fought with the East in the first Penzik War. Um, there were two events that I recollect. They did not have as many in the labyrinth. Um, was that we had. We had one which, as far as I recall, was unique, and that was we had a living chess game, and which uh, you, uh, the pieces, when one piece moved on to another piece's uh, square, instead of being taken according to the regular rules, they fought it out to see who took who. And um, the um, the kings, of course, were the kings, and the crown princes were the queens. So, so I fought as, as the queen of the East, the jokes on which we will omit. <laughs> uh, but, um, I, um, and Berenger um, Hanardi, the, the, the fighting as the queen of the middle, um, in fact, killed me. Uh, the East, in fact, did very badly in that battle. The, the one East Realm warrior who won a combat that I recall, also I deeply regret to say is on the wall there, is Sir Patri de Chagri, the knight of uh, Carolingia, um, a man who uh, was, I might say, also an extremely good fencer, but that was not a society art at the time. Uh, he uh, was a master of the thrust. Um, uh, the other battle besides the living chess game was the Woods battle. 
and the rules which were adopted on the first woods battle were that the Eastern Army, being the smaller army, would be permitted to go into the woods and find the strongest position that they could find. And uh, after a given amount of time, the middle army would come after them. And if the East Army could survive for an hour, uh, we had won. Otherwise, they had won in the battle. And uh, so we went out and spent significant time finding the most deeply hidden place we could find in the woods. And we found a place uh, where two of the trees had fallen across, forming a kind of natural gate. And we formed up behind that natural gate and stayed very, very <laughs> and it almost worked because the mid realm army found us with 10 minutes of the hour to go. They knew they had to slaughter the entire uh, Eastern army in 10 minutes to win the battle. And it was very fiercely fought. As John the Fair Haired. Uh, who later went on to become a Duke of the East. There was a young rising fighter from Carolingia, held that natural gate for a long time, very valiantly, for which I must say I later, when I was king, knighted him. He was the only man I knighted in my reign. Um, but after they broke through the gate, became something of a slaughter. Andrew of Saltamraster from behind a tree thrust a spear through King Cariadoc the bow and cried, The king is dead! Uh, being uh, the crown prince of the east yelled, The king is dead! Long live the king! Whereupon, <laughs> three mid-realm knights went over me in a way. Sick. One of them was Merrawald Sylvester, and I wouldn't swear to it. The events were moving very quickly at that point. Uh, so I fell. And the rest of the Eastern Army was fairly quickly slaughtered. The last of the um, Eastern warriors to fall was Alain de Rocher, if I was in the barony of Mercury. Baltimore. Alain de Rocher was a large man who fought with a very small shield and nurse, but he got up on a little wise and grand kind of man and held off as long as possible. But he was finally slain, and that was the end of the battle. So that, that was the first Brexit War. Unfortunately, thereafter it rained, all the cars got in the mud, and we spent the next day dragging them out of the field where we had parked. Well, that was the first time I Thank you.